Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock with a Sunday card instead of a Monday card. We're a day early because I wanted to be here to remind you to go over to Ellen Hudson's channel to see my other video. And this is the card that I'm making today. I sneak peeked on Friday. So I'm going to be using these beautiful hexagonal shaped stamps. Oh, I'm so excited that there's a hexagon shaped item that fits in a hexagon die now that we have hexagon frame dies. So I've cut a bunch of them out of watercolor paper and I'm going to stamp them in my Misty so I could get them as close as possible to correct. And I am terrible at lining up any kind of die and any kind of stamp. So they're not going to be perfect, but that actually led to a really interesting solution. So I'm stamping them in a bunch of different distress inks and then just inking the edges. Look at that, like filling in any of those edges so nobody's gonna know that my stamping was not perfectly centered. That also is going to give it a little difference from the frames because I'm gonna have the frames around them in the card. So this is gonna give them a little more of a heavy outline around the outside edges just to have that little bit of inking done. Very cool, huh? I wanted something loose on the card though, because all of this was very regimented in the hexagons and I wanted something contrasting to that. So I decided to try ink smushing. A lot of people do ink smushing all the time and I don't think I've ever ink smushed. Maybe I have, I don't know. I can't remember if I have. So I got out my craft assistant and I threw on the same inks that I used for stamping all of the hexagons and just threw little bits and pieces of ink, little, little blobs, on there and then wet it with a little bit of spray of water and then smushed a piece of watercolor paper on it and moved it around a little bit so I could get a background that just had some smushiness on it. And it came out really pretty, like rainbowish. I thought, let me see if I can blow out one end. So I had one end that has hard edges and one end that has soft so I could decide when I put the card together which way was gonna make more sense, which side I wanted sticking out because I had a vision in my mind for having a, like half the card with the hexagons and then the other half with something loose and splashy. So for the rest of this, while the background is drying, I thought I'd take my brush and a little bit of water and just go over some of the leaves and flowers in these. It's going to make them feel like they've been watercolored, even though all I'm doing is putting water right over top of the distress ink. And this is a really easy technique. It's super, super simple. Lots of people probably already know how to do it, but it looks really beautiful on these designs. Aren't they just gorgeous? If you're a quilter, I think you might need these. I'm just gonna say that because even if you, well, if you're not a quilter, this might be your only quilting. This is gonna be my only quilting because I don't sew. So now I've chosen a piece of cardstock to use for my background that I'm gonna glue all this down to. And before I peeled off that backing, I wanted to arrange my hexagons and see where alignment needed to be. Cause I wanted to see if I could get this to be kind of even. And it looks like I get a little hangover on the bottom and the top from each one. So at least I know where to start so that I have an even spread of all of my hexagons. So I'm gonna start by putting one on here you know, knowing that I'm going to cut off the outside edges um, on the left and right. So I'm not really worried about that. I just want a strip of hexagons, you know, kind of two beside each other. And making that top one hang over just a little tiny bit the way it did when I laid everything out. And then glue these down really carefully so that they're touching each other. And this sticky back stuff is like super sticky. It's the same stuff as in score tape, but it comes in sheets and it's kind of crazy sticky. So once you put it down, you ain't getting it back up for the most part, especially if you press it down. So I'm gonna get my strips all completely in here. And then all I have to do is tuck in all of my designs. Well, how do I know which color I'm gonna put next to which color? I laid them all out beforehand in strips so I can kind of see what color rotation. So I didn't have you know two of one color right next to each other, that kind of thing. And then all I had to do was piece them in there little by little and they all are stuck in there. Nothing's popping out and I have a beautiful arrangement for my card. Now this alone could be beautiful, except now I have all this sticky back on the left and right. 
there's other ways that you can probably figure out to do this kind of a thing, but I was already planning to do some cutting out. This is really straight, easy cutting, just little straight lines. So I figured it wasn't too bad for fussy cutting at all. So did that. You could also just do this by taping everything together on the backs and, you know, just using lots of scotch tape, but this seemed like it would be a little quicker. So there I have my strip and I kept turning my background paper different directions to see which way I liked it better. And I liked that hard edge showing out on the right a little bit. And so I've then trimmed the whole thing down. So I have nice square top and bottom and left the border of the card base showing on the left and right. And then my sentiment is half glued down with just regular adhesive. And then on the right hand side, there's a little bit of dimensional adhesive. And then I just trimmed off that little piece that was hanging out. That was all there was to it. I chose a sentiment specifically for a friend of mine. She's getting ready to start a new business and it involves sewing. And I thought this would be absolutely perfect for her. I was tickled when I saw this stamp set in the new Ellen Hudson release. If you'd like to go see me color some tulips over on Ellen's channel, you can do that. There's a link in the doobly-doo to that, as well as all of the supplies that I used to make today's card. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you have not yet done so, and I will see you again really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.